How we doing, traders? Welcome to it, Money Mitch. And I got to say, what happened to the growth stocks today? It had something to do also with PAL today. We'll talk all about it, the Fed Minutes. Hit that thumbs up. Let's get Money Mitch started. It's time for Money Making Mitch. When investors need a story, we're going to the moon. Welcome to Money Mitch, where story is everything. I'm here to find you the next opportunity. It's all about the green hands. Now we all know the bull market is here to stay. Money Mitch. doing out there so i know you guys are probably wondering what happened in the market today let's go ahead and take a look market sentiment oh it looks like i left the, the christopher brand up there there you go that's the right one now we're on money mitch let's get this rolling right uh let's take a look here what happened i was taking a look at my baggy genie it's still kind of at least not the weakest stock in this market right now look at the spy look at that move on the downside we didn't want to see it hold we we're looking for the breakout through the 480s we actually had a strong day uh yesterday looking like we were going to hold above that 480 then today what do we do we just come and crush down through that 474 but what really happened right i mean it all comes down to the fed minutes the minutes from the fed's december meeting indicated that the officials are ready to pretty much pull back uh, aggressively on the help uh, you know there's two things that i was taught when i was learning uh, kind of uh, market structure economics there's two things that can help right there's fiscal policy and there's monetary policy right and so right here you're starting to see what now the help being pulled back and what actually was released today was a, a actual increase here right and it's not only the aspect of them kind of pointing to a reduction of the bond uh buying and not just slowing down of the buying they're talking about actually the reduction of the bond holdings so selling some of those bonds this is exactly what you weren't trying to see if you're bullish on the market because we we're already looking that interest rates were going to knock down the market right we were already looking that the slowing of the tape you know tapering was going to slow down that growth cycle right now you're seeing a little bit worse you're seeing a little bit more of that press. Another thing that was also mentioned, of course, members expressing concerns about inflation and saying that the job market was near full in uh, employment. So you guys are clearly seeing here a little bit of a mix. They're trying to fight inflation faster, but what is this doing to the market? As you guys can see here, the effect wasn't good for the market right now. Uh, definitely getting crushed, uh, but I mean, Overall, in the sense, I think this is just kind of bad just because of the timing. I know that a lot of traders were trying to look for these long trades to start out the year or maybe even some of these growth stocks to catch a bid. And that's not what we got today. We got kind of more the opposite, uh, not catching the bid there in the SPY. Uh, and look at the Qs. The Qs also taking a hit there, of course, uh, down towards the 380s. And if this cracks there, uh, I don't want to see where we can go towards because we could look like we could head back towards 360s. Why is that concerning to me? Because what are the stocks that are going to get hit the most and in kind of an interest rate or kind of a tapering or even worse, the bonds kind of getting off there? Really, what you're going to see is these high uh, earning stocks are really the PE, forward looking PE stocks are not going to have that same outlook on their earnings. So this is where the concerning really kind of comes into play. Uh, you even saw Apple turn on the downside. Uh, you know, that's where I was kind of taking a look to see if Apple was going to turn around. That's been the market darling right now. Uh, why do I call it the market darling? Because it's been holding us up. You know, it's been really kind of making new highs, pushing through the highs. And now you see a big turnaround there towards the 175. Be careful because if this starts taking out the 170 and we really start changing over the trend, I'd be careful about the overall market. But let's take a look here at some of the other names. Tesla is another good indicator to look at the overall market. And you can see today we went back towards that important price point of 1167 and dropping back all the way towards the 1000 price point. Now it looks like we're at 1084. We could break even there. So just watch out, guys.
All right, catching up with the chat. What's going on out there, Kyle? Uh, Tiny, how we doing out there? Pessimistic pal. I mean, yeah, he definitely came in and hit the hit the market there. Yeah, Code Genie, I, I'm with you, Dylan. Don't worry, I'll, I'll be holding on to that bad boy. Uh, Easy Mike, what's going on out there? Ivan, what's up out there? Pedro in the house. Apple, one of the only stocks holding the market, right? And so one of the things that I've been watching, guys, and and I don't do this often, but I'll, I'll bring Finviz here. And I've been watching this. I, I've talked about this plenty of times. So we've been watching this number. This is the important one right here. The above SMA 200 and what is below the SMA 50. And so I've been watching this number. This number has gone up as high as about 62% and as low as 52% on, let's say, Monday. And so now I'm looking to see if this number is going to get a little bit better. This is the 50. This one has gone as high as 67% on the high side and as low as 57 on the low side. Um, we're going to look to see if this can finally change. What I really want to see is this number get to 50. If this number can get start getting above 50, the, the stocks that are above the SMA 200, that's when I'm really going to say that we're out of this kind of bearish turn in the market breadth. How we doing, Mike? It's good to see you in the chat. It's good to have you in the chat. Let's keep it going. All right, so that's what I'm going to be watching. Market breath, so important here, guys. And this is why I talk about it and why I say definitely take a look at even just that Finviz. You could just literally open it up to the home, and I just take a look at that. I don't need to, I don't need to do a lot of digging. I can just look at that to tell me, hey, when am I really going to be bullish again and if I'm going to stay on the bear side right now. So I did get stopped out of a stock today, guys. I want to go ahead and mention here, one of the things that I try to do is be transparent about my position. Got stopped out of ChargePoint. Uh, was looking for this to continue making it to move on up. We got in on the third. It pushed on up there to the 20. We wanted to see it reclaim. Yesterday I said if it closed above 19, I would hold on to it. Today, what do we get? We get a close below 19 so definitely getting out of this charge point retracing almost to all the way to the 18s today uh it was a, a I think a little bit over five percent loss but it happens guys first loss of the year uh is on charge point and square we'll get back we'll get some gainers we got in some day trades to give us a little bit of a push up but we'll keep watching these and charge point got stopped out and that's the way it goes guys all right let's keep going voodoo what's going on out there guys uh, Voodoo, I'm loving you in the chat, man. I keep, appreciate the value you're bringing, so keep it up. I was in cash all day. I posted in the live trade earlier that the market was running into mix mode. I don't trade them due to chop. The runners I usually trade did not pull back for a trend trade. Hey, you stick with what works, man. If you see that's your trade and you see everybody else trying to trade everything, just let them know that ain't me and stick to that. All right, uh, Christian Rivas. What's going on out there? Let's keep it going. You got a stock for me to take a look at? Daryl bringing in the the Mitch stock? <laughs> I wish it was. I used to think Match. I used to say Match was Mitch. Uh, that's MTCH. So, hey, who knows? Maybe this can come back. All right, let's take a look here. What was strong and what was not today, right? So one of the areas that I've been looking for is – we got to ask ourselves, what are the themes that we can come into play, right? So one of the themes that I've been looking for is for the inflationary trade to continue. I know that the Fed today is giving you signs that they're trying to really push on deflation, but the re there's reason why. I think they're really concerned about persistent inflation next year, this year right now that we're on. Now we need to watch to see how inflation keeps reading. So pay attention, of course, to the CPI number. When that comes out again, we're going to be really watching. But for me, inflationary environments, you look for assets to appreciate in value. So what are we going to do? We're going to look to see. We're going to look at basic materials. I've been looking at those. The steel plays I've been really calling out. Uh, Cliff is my favorite one. Having a really great day today. Uh, pushing on up there. This one looks like it's trying to get towards a resistance of 26. We'll see if it can continue pushing on up. But it did have a nice trend last time it pushed. It pushed about, say, about $10. Um, but I don't see that right now. I see potentially maybe about a $5 push from this 25. Uh, but we'll see what happens here in Cliff. If you take a look here at X, 
X chart might even look better. Uh, we were looking at this one, and this one was a little late to the party, but now we're finally back. What? Above the 200-day. This is what I want to also point out. Remember how I talked about earlier about the Finviz, right? Above and below the 200-day SMA. It's something to definitely keep in mind. There's times when I tell you that you can trade and not worry too much about that SMA 200. And those are times when we're in extreme bullish mode. But right now, it's not that time. It's kind of more concerning times right now as you're seeing these kind of weak down motions, right? And so you want to be trading those stocks that are above that 200 day. This is a clear example of those types of stocks. Look how X is above that 200 day and it even has the 50 day right below that showing you that it what? It's staying within the trend. And so within that trend, now we're starting to see that lift above it. Now it could hold that 200 day as support. You want to see kind of this 24 really hold on any pullback. Uh, nice day for steel today, pushing on up. And they went to a high of 26.12. All right, so some other plays you guys can take a look at. NUH, uh, NUE is another steel play that I definitely call out. We've been talking about this one multiple times, multiple highs, breaking out from this 118. I would look for pullbacks to 120, but that 118 to hold on the extension. All right, let's go ahead. Let's see what we see out there. Another one, CHNR coming back. This is a China one. I, honestly, penny stock. I would leave that one maybe alone there. FRD, not that bad of a chart, but not really something you want to see. Look where the 200-day is here. It's all the way up here. Uh, NX, NXE is one that I'll actually look for it because what? The 200-day is below it, guys. And so we're getting towards that 50. Look for uh, $5 and 470s to hold on pullbacks. We'll look at this one can continue going. Not that much lift in this one that it can keep going. But, hey, not one to uh, kind of keep your eyes off of it. STLD is one that I definitely look for an upside continuation move. I really like this weekly chart. You can see that kind of push that we're getting. And I think this one could continue going. And who knows? Maybe potentially we find a $100 stock in steel dynamics here. STLD, what do we need to see continue? Inflation and steel. All right. So industrial minerals are something that we talked about yesterday. We were looking at LAC. That was one of the big movers of yesterday. We were going to see if that one could continue doing. And it actually pulled back. So it had the inside candle. Let's see if it can hold that pullback of 3068. And then get right back above that level tomorrow. We'll see if it can hold that pullback and start pushing back on up. All right. So another one, LTHM, was one we were going to keep an eye out is lithium. That one pulled back towards 24. We'll see if it can get back above 26. It did look like it wanted to come on up. PLL is another one that pulled back today significantly after having a good day. And for that being mentioned, we could also look at MP. And P also having a significant pullback from that breakout. All right. Uh, looks like that is on it. <laughs> We're not going to call him Jay Powell anymore. We're going to call him Jay Low here. Definitely. Uh, hey, not what we wanted to see, guys. Definitely not what we wanted to see. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but uh, I, I, I didn't expect to hear that today. You know, I. I thought we would get some. I thought we would get some kind of negative news into those minutes, maybe talks of inflation. But I mean, it, it, it got really bad. And I got to keep an eye on it because to me today, I think there was a lot of people yelling out there. They were like, you know what, pal? You know what, pal? You know what? Boo, you suck. You suck. Boo, you suck. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I mean, he, up, down, up. I don't think there was any transparency in this, and I don't think anybody was expecting this. Now, is it in fighting inflation? Yes. So that's a good thing. You know, I, I do want to fight some inflation. I'm going to the grocery store spending a lot more money, so that's not fun. But at the same time, we don't want to see stocks take a hit. So, hey, you know how it goes. It's hard to have both both ways. No more peace for piles as master of stocks. I can't can't disagree with that. Definitely, guys, do me the favor, guys. Smash the thumbs up. It's 445. We'll be off in about 15 minutes. So stick around. In about five minutes, I got stocks from the chat. So if you guys want to take some stocks from the chat, get ready to throw them on up. 
All right, so what was the weakest sector today? Of course, technology taking a hard hit. So now we got to really be careful because for a second there, we were coming on back, right? We were coming on to these highs. We got towards a trend. And what happens? <sighs> Takedown, guys. And a lot of these stocks taking a big hit. Remember when I talked about last time when we were in this kind of environment? What did I say? I say watch Microsoft. Watch Microsoft. Look how this really took a downturn and watch for Adobe because those have really been taking hits and Adobe never even came back. At least Microsoft came back. Adobe never came back. It just dead cat bounced and back right back on down. So just be careful out there and especially in anything software. I think this is, has to do with the, the forward looking PEs that you have in software, but you got to be careful in software names right now. They're getting crushed. Just stay absolutely crushed. If we take a look here at software application, I'm going to try to point out some of the biggest losers of the day. Uh, EXFY, relatively newer uh, IPO, just getting hit hard on the downside. Uh, SOPA getting hit on the downside. HUT even getting hit on the downside. When even the Bitcoin stocks can't hold on, you got to be careful, guys. Mara uh, taking a hit, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so just be careful with these. These are taking hits, so... You got to be careful. It's not like you can find uh, some strength right there, at least in the Bitcoin stocks. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look. What other things kind of struggled today? Uh, we could definitely see solar getting just pounded on, guys. Remember, I was a big fan of this kind of uh, index right here. And, and I was trying to trade this up move. And it did make that up move. We got that up move in October, November. And when December came, man, did we have that turnaround. It was going on up here. It was looking great. And then it really started flushing down. Solar is really out of favor. This is how you can look for stocks to come in and out of favor. Clear example right now, solar out of favor. You can take a look at some of these names taking a big hit today. Beam, B-E-E-M, down to 1723. EMPH, 11% down today down towards 157 and cracking hard even jks right jks it was sending up for a nice bullish move looks like it comes to continue on the downside these are breaking back bad on the downside we'll see if it continues coming on down all right let's go ahead let's keep going emperor wants to talk about forward i actually shorted forward today for a little bit of a gain uh we'll see if this can continue on the downside uh but this was all about what a retracement right uh, so the retracement here on Ford was kind of a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing that came out of DM. Uh, this is all, it was all pushing off the Ford news, but also a rumor, uh, not really a rumor, but an event that was going to happen in GM. It was forward looking. You can see the rise into it. And then what happens when the news comes out, boom, they drop it on the downside and you can see the pullback in GM. I think this pulls back somewhere near the 61 uh, in Ford. I'd be looking for somewhere closer towards closing this gap, 22. And then once I close that gap, I would look for a re-entry uh, for it to come back towards 25. I do like forward. It was one of my favorite charts, but not holding anymore. Nova, SPWR, all of them took a hit. Yes, Pedro. That's exactly why I pointed out. Because at the end of the day, I mean, if we could see them all take a hit, we can definitely find a trade off of that. The last thing I want to talk about is ARKK and the destruction of that level that we talked about yesterday. We said how important it was. Was it going to get down towards this 91 area and crack through the 90? That's exactly what happened in ARKK. And you can look here. We talked about this yesterday, but look here, guys. This right-hand side right here represents all the items that are right now in ARKK. And I can tell you one Every single stock here, Zoom, Twitter, Shop, CRISPR, Spotify, Tesla, PD, whatever you want to look at, Coin, TWO, uh, Fate, whatever. What do you like? Palantir, Roblox, Triple D, Docu, Unity, um, Square, Hood, DraftKings, Beam, uh, Skills, BLI, all of them. Just taking a massive takedown. Be careful, guys. Th this is scary for me because at the end of the day, you know, she also got into my bag, which is Genie. 
that's the only bag I'm holding right now. But man, Kathy has been kind of an omen right now to stocks. That's what I'm going to call her right now. It's not even a, a bad luck sign. I'm going to call her an omen right now. So it's kind of scary. It's kind of scare. Can you go slowly? Yes, I can go slowly through this list. Um, you could look up this list also. Just go to their go to her website. Um, but you could just see it. It's the, the worst ones are like DNA, Roku taking an 11% hit today through the 200. Uh, there's so many of these that are taking big hits. And definitely, that's not a good look for the ARKK. And if you guys don't remember, where was the first interview of the Sark on Benzinga? And what is Sark? That is short, that ARKK. And as you guys can see, that that was a great interview that I got you guys. There's a reason why I was I was thinking Kathy was done already. And look how Sark, this is when we did this interview down here. Look where we're at it now. Look how this is starting to push through. I pointed out how you had that third resistance. And what did we do? We drew this line. We said, are we going to go ahead and get on up here? We drew this line to see if we could get on up there and keep holding on up there. Now, 39.50s on pullbacks. Sark looking good for the upside move. The short Kathy Club meeting was well attended to today. I was there. Hey, can't blame you, Tad. Dennis Dick called this one hour ago. I'll say it again. Crypto is next. Ooh, I could see that one. Dennis is not wrong. I, I could see a bear market going into crypto. I could see a bear market going into different assets. One thing to keep in mind is what inning are we in the bull market? To me, I think we are in the late inning. I think we are in way too much optimism on any upside move. Anytime we have an upside move, everyone's like, yes, gun it, gun it. We're going long, baby. Melt up. We're all good. Next thing you know, when we go down, look at the faces around you. Look at the eyes. Look at the reaction. Look at the emotion. What are you seeing? You're seeing panic. What does that mean? Too many people positioned one way. And so on the long term, that's why it's concerning because there is a lot of people on one side. We'll see what happened. The Kathy Omen, <laughs> you already know. Hey, you heard it first here on Money Mitch. All right. Wow. I like Sark Emperor says, hey, check it out. If you like it, you, you, you know, who knows? Maybe you trade that on the upside. All right. Here's the thing with Kathy. She's published her buys and everyone bought the next day. Now she publishes and everyone shorts. She hasn't figured that one out yet. Hey, Thad, you might be the smart guy there. If you're, if you're noticing that, you just might be. Voodoo, you tend to agree with me? Hey, don't agree with me always. Call me out when you see it the same way Thad would do it and the same way some other guys would do it also. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what we're seeing out there. I want to go to stocks that you guys want to bring up. So this is the time where I'll go to stocks from you guys. we got about six minutes left, but I'll bring some stocks from the chat. Let's go ahead and roll through. I'll, I'll roll back. I see S got hit. Um, Sentinel-1, yep, software. Software stock getting crushed. CrowdStrike, ooh, this is actually going to be an opportunity, guys. CrowdStrike is a very important stock. And I think in the long term, it's a very good one. But... Can it come down towards attractive valuation? Look when I used to trade this. I used to trade this all the way back, and I was looking at this one in 2020 for a long. And I, I don't lie, guys. I show you guys all the time that this shows you the date. I was looking at this one for a long in the pandemic, and, man, this one was a monster. In the pandemic, this one went down to, like, to say, hmm, what was the low here? Around $30, and this went all the way up to – almost 300. So you're talking about a move, uh, what, 10 times? So it could lose five times that maybe. Could even come down towards 150, half of that move, or even further down towards 100. So that's why I'm going to be looking for CrowdStrike. If it come back down there, I like that stock. But at the same time, I'm not going to go catching falling knives right now. Lucid, master of stonks. Oh, man. Lucid is probably getting crushed there. It rejected that 40 breakout. I was actually looking for this one to hold that 40 last time we went through this. And now I think it takes out this 36.68. Tomorrow I will be looking for shorts on Lucid. I'm sorry, guys, but I do think this is one to take down 
towards the 30, which is the next price point down. All right, uh, MRK being mentioned uh, here. I'll, I'll grab that one red rum for you. Like Bourne says, do me the favor, guys. Support me. Hit the like button. I need you guys supporting me, so definitely like on up. Let's keep going. Uh, Merck, Merck being mentioned here. The one thing about Merck is that their pill wasn't really effective, but I drew out this shadow. And I said, when can we fill the shadow? I actually drew this out on December 15th. So I've been looking for that shadow fill on Merck. And you can see it's been going on back. And from the 15th, I'm going to draw a circle on that date where we where we were at right here. And so when we drew that date, when we drew this, uh, this right here, this shadow, we were looking for the shadow to fill. And the stock was right here. Now the stock is getting towards that shadow. Once it gets in there, and it fills that. Be careful because it could turn right back around. When you have an anti-business government running the country, growth gets cut, choked off. Hurts. I don't even want to get started on that, man. I, I've been getting a little, I've been feeling a little bit more political and I don't even want to get started on that. Your bear call might have been proven, Mitch. Uh, I will tip my hat to you if the spy drops 10%. We'll see. Definitely. I mean, the, the, the concerning thing to me is just the market breadth. If only a couple stocks lead the rally, every time this leads the rally, yes, it brings the ceiling higher, but it also creates further space from where I think the the fair valuation is. And so with that being mentioned, we could get further dip. All right. Planted uh, says I'm up eight, 45% on Apple in my Roth. I'm thinking of taking those profits and putting them into more of a dip into uh, something like Matterport. Now, one thing with that planted, and I don't like, we don't give financial advice. I'm not trying to give financial advice here for you at all. Uh, but if in my position there, if the only way I would sell that Apple position is if I'm looking at another winner type to grab. So I would be looking at something like, let's say, I don't know, like QCOM or something like that. Um, something that has some real kind of value to it. Um, I wouldn't go into something like a risky thing like Matterport, even though I think Matterport is going to be doing well with kind of the, the metroverse and kind of the, the moves that they made in construction. I still would be careful. When you're dealing with your Roth, at least from what I would do, is my retirement, right? I don't want my retirement money disappearing. So I want to keep those profits. Maybe you can rotate them into something else, or maybe it's even take your profits, look for a pullback, look for a re-entry and even Apple. Or maybe it's just putting them somewhere. Um, another thing you can think of, uh, take a look at is can I hedge my Apple position? Is there a way for me to hedge that position? I would look into that. All right, uh, Lucid has lock up this month. Dude, Green, you're scaring me, man. You're scaring me. Lucid, I'll be looking for it. What's the lock up date? I'm going to have to look that up. Thank you for that, Green. I, you know what? I'm going to write that down. I'll definitely look that up because that's important. If, if the lock up date's coming up, oh, watch out, Lucid. I actually wrote that down. I'll be mentioning that tomorrow. I appreciate you for mentioning that up. Sark up 11%, Jim. Hey. That's what I like to hear. Nicker, you got destroyed. Hey, hang in there, man. It's not always going to be an upside day. One thing you got to do is try not to make – we have this rule, and I like to say this. Let's not make one day make us, and we're not going to make one day break us. So what this means is don't put all your eggs in one trade. If you put all your eggs in one trade, that one trade could break you. It could end – and your account in one trade. Or you could take the approach that I'm not going to let one trade do it. It's going to have to be like 50 trades that does it or 500 trades that does it. That's called diversification. That leaves the probability in your favor. That What that does is that gives you enough of a sample size also to get, let your process work out the volatility of the market. All right, guys, it's going to do it for me today. I'm going to go ahead and do one last one. MTTR lockup also in January 19th. Uh, SNR pointing out. Appreciate you bringing that up. Chad Smith bringing it up here. Lucid lockup 119. Thank you for going in and giving that information for me. I will go ahead and write that date down because uh, it's going to be important going into it. We'll see what happens here. 
do you think this is way too much of an overreaction to the minutes, especially since this is from the December minutes? The, the big key here is this. Are they really going to start selling off those bonds? Mm, I don't know. I'm not so certain about this. What I think this is, and of course, this is not financial advice, but just my opinion. I think this is the Fed trying to preempt the market on those interest rate hikes that they're seeing they're going to have to do to what to kill that inflation right i don't think they're going to go so far into actually selling those bonds it's mentioned here we'll see if they actually start doing it um well of course what what happened here was that they were talking about tapering not selling of these bonds and this was a completely change in mentality here but we're going to keep on watch i think the market's trying to price in a little bit of that interest rate hike that they want to do in Q1. We'll see if we get that interest rate hike. All right, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys have a great one. Have a good one. Take care. Keep battling out there. If you guys got a stock you guys want me to check out, you guys can always reach out to me at Story Investors on Twitter. Let me know, hey, can you check out this stock? This is what I see out there. What do you see? I'll definitely give you my opinion. Like always, guys, I'm not a professional, but I have been doing this for more than five years now, and I've been putting in the time, and you guys will see that I can definitely try to help you guys get to the next level. Hit the thumbs up. I'll see you next time, guys. Smash on up. I appreciated you guys joining in. And for you guys that are new out there, it looks like we have some new people joining us today. Definitely do us a favor. Check out some other Benzinga shows. We've got some good stuff for you. I'm gonna go